Good morning, folks. We've got the first geomagnetic storm of the new solar cycle to report. We've got weather, solar system formation conditions, Hubble, recurrent nova, and the future. We're starting with our star at spaceweathernews.com and find the last day with the equatorial coronal hole components turning out. Forecast calls for calm solar wind next week, but before that, the coronal hole stream from those departed components did hit Earth yesterday. As expected, it was more intense than the previous stream with multiple steps of intensification. The initial impact brought on the short-lived geomagnetic storm component of the event, clearly still reverberating a bit this morning, and indeed the magnetic shield of our planet took all the punishment on this one. Ionospheric effects and corrections needed are virtually zero. Let's go to Niger, where flooding has killed dozens, displaced over 200,000. The region sees record rain hit scorched dry earth and goes virtually nowhere. Quick look at the hurricane version of an x-ray. This was Laura as she came on shore in Louisiana, revealing the cloud heights and precipitation density within the system. Right now, the remnant of that storm is approaching New England and will actually be a bit of a pain making for a wet Saturday, but eyes must be taken to the central states. Follow-up low going ham in the models tonight. Eyes open Arkansas and the Oklahoma border. Quick shift of gears up next to space and we begin with the concept of star water. The universe set up to make that water and now they are saying there is no need for comets and asteroids to have delivered that water to Earth over time. It's been here all along, not to mention constantly being produced when solar wind hydrogen strikes oxygenated rock material. Up next folks, this is the Cygnus Loop, a supernova remnant that has created star forming regions within it. The cloud is about to be the subject here of a major zoom in on one of the more puzzling features within the remnant, what is being called the Thin Veil. This is Hubble's shot of the thinned out plasma expansion from the initial nova event, still traveling through space at incredible speeds and its interactions with the sparse surrounding medium plasma are the cause of those ripples in the veil. Up next, T. Coroni Borealis is a rapidly recurrent nova. Remember, those are the ones that repeat their nova within about a human lifetime or less. And this one is being furiously studied because it's gearing up for its next recurrent nova. It was first discovered in 1866. It then went off 80 years later. The system is having brightness changes here 74 years since its last outburst. And it is also worth noting, the brightness range listed for this one make it the current record holder for brightest known rapidly recurrent nova, likely coming again this decade. And last but not least, NASA's Heliophysics Division has selected five candidate missions to receive funding to flush out their next mission and see what's going to be possible. Indeed, we've got some rankings for these, and let's begin with the second and third items on their list, Helio Swarm and Muse, mostly space weather learning missions, fine detail how the eruptions work from a physics perspective, with perhaps some plasma physics available from Helioswarm mission that could be cosmologically relevant. Up next, we're going to take a look at the fourth and fifth items on their list. ARCS is about as relevant of a space weather study as those first two we saw, with this one edging them out slightly for its focus on the space-atmosphere boundary and the potential to better describe solar forcing of the terrestrial condition. Similarly, last on the list, Solaris might be able to do just that for the solar polar magnetic fields. These have been well correlated with megaquake activity, and it is why we called for an earthquake warning starting tomorrow, the solar polar field data. This mission could help. Lastly, folks, we go to what's first on their list, STORM. This one combines a global space weather monitoring and analysis suite with the ability to monitor Earth's changing magnetic field state something that will only remain less relevant than the election, BLM, COVID, etc. until it collapses our civilization in what we've gauged as a 25% risk this sunspot cycle, increasing as we go forward. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close, and of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.